終わらせてあげる。So I've had a chance to check out Duet Night Abyss, and I gotta say, after playing it for some time, I'm quite excited about this game's future. Now, this is a technical test, and thanks to Hero Games, I was invited to it. However, the game is still in its early stages, and I expect a lot of things will change about it. Also, while this is a sponsored video, the developers basically just wanted me to provide my feedback and insight about the game, which is pretty cool, and you can pre-register to the game by using my link in the description. So, what is Duet Night Abyss all about? Well, it's kinda hard for me to nail it down to one genre, but essentially, it's a fantasy RPG anime game where you actively use one character and equip on them one melee and one ranged weapon. You can also summon two other characters from your roster, which will act on their own, but another important aspect about this game is that there's a lot of movement. Like, you can do these cool slide jumps, which I think the game calls them helix leaps, but you can also double jump, shoot the enemies while being suspended in air, dodge, and so on. Like, the combat feels really active, and there's quite a few things I really liked about it. For example, you can build up your combos with normal melee attacks, or by using skills with certain characters, and then, what you can do is unleash a charge attack with melee weapon, and the better the combo ranking is, the more damage it will deal. So, yeah, in today's video, I am mostly going to share my first impressions about this game, and I'll cover the gameplay, the characters, and a few other features I thought were pretty interesting. Okay, so the first thing that I really liked was the customization of the character you play. You see, each unit has three unique skills. Two of them are active and one is passive. For example, Berenica can dash forward and deal AoE damage, which looks super stylish and always satisfying to unleash, while her other active skill allows her to switch to her own unique weapon, Emir, and then you can start spamming these sword waves to demolish the enemies. And as for her passive, if she's using a sword, she can restore some sanity. And sanity is basically required to use one of the two active skills. I don't believe any characters I've played with have any sort of cooldown for their skills, so they're only limited by how much sanity they have. And this sanity resource can be obtained in various ways. Now, here's the cool part. You can equip any melee and any ranged weapon on your active character. So, for example, I can use any of these spears or swords I have in my inventory, and each of them have unique passive abilities. So, as far as I'm aware, none of the characters are limited by what weapon type they can equip. And I really like that, because one of my favorite ranged weapons so far is this cannon called Firearm Feast. And man, what a feast it really is. It's just so fun to blast everyone to pieces, but I could also use this rifle for precise attack attacks, or even switch to these dual pistols and live out my gunslinging dreams. Now, some characters will also have their unique weapons, like Berenica's Emir, and these are called consonance weapons, and the characters will only use them with some abilities, while the active melee and ranged weapons can be used anytime. And yeah, so far I have 6 characters unlocked. It's probably no secret by this point I love Berenica's playstyle, but there's also Psyche who can actually fly around and shoot enemies with her skill, Fushu here can help heal the team and increase attack speed, which actually feels really impactful, especially if you just use her as a summon combat partner. And then Rebecca here, she can deploy jellyfishes and deal increased damage with her other skill if the jellyfishes have tagged enemies. While the last one, Lin, is a legit gunslinger who can tag the enemies with her skill and then build up powerful damage with ranged attacks. But yeah, in a nutshell, the gameplay is super fluid. Right now I'm playing on PC, so with my left mouse button, I attack with a melee weapon, but if I hold down the right mouse button, then I quickly switch to the ranged weapon and unleash attacks with it. Now, just using characters and weapons without a progression system, at least to me, is a bit boring. But thankfully, there's a cool way you can customize everything that you're using, thanks to this upgrade system called Demon Wedges. You see, you can equip these wedges on any characters as well as melee and ranged weapons. You might have already noticed it from the menu earlier. And how it works is that you can put these demon wedges into slots, and after doing so, they will provide passive upgrades. For example, this one right here provides plus 60% max sanity and plus 15% skill efficiency. In other words, Berenica now will have more sanity at her disposal, which means she can unleash more skills, and on top of that, skill efficiency reduces the cost of her skills, so she can even spam them more often. It's a pretty cool system that allows you to customize characters and weapons to your liking. But there's always a catch. 
You see this tolerance bar right here? Well, you can only equip demon wedges if they will not exceed this tolerance. You can see the cost right here of each demon wedge. So for example, these ones here cost 7, 6 and 15. Add up the total of all 5 I have equipped right now and the tolerance is at 43 while the max limit is 50. So I have to make sure not to exceed it. And the thing is, the cost will increase with the demon wedge when you level it up and even if it's of a different rarity. However, there is a way to reduce costs by putting the wedges into their appropriate track. Basically, if the slot has a matching symbol to the demon wedge, the cost will be reduced. So you can see here this one going from 14 to 7. And so far, I can just use this item here to change the slots into different tracks, which is pretty convenient. Now, one thing I really love about this system is that first, you can have up to 3 loadouts. However, what's even better, characters and weapons can share the same demon wedge. So update it once and equip on anyone or any weapon you want. Oh, and you can also customize any character. I've equipped this classical anime bandaged eye patch on my berry, but there's a lot of other options you can combine, like ribbons, glasses, small items, back clothing, and more. It's pretty refreshing to see a system like this. But yeah, enough about customization. What about the gameplay? Well, so far, I've only got to experience two zones. They're pretty small, but since this is a technical test, it's fine, I guess. However, there is a main story and some side quests you can take on. Now, when it comes to the main story, from what I understand, you can choose either male or female main character. For this test, only female option was available. And then you spend some time with Berenica, who seems really close to you. And the main character actually calls her Barry, which is pretty cute. But then some baddies show up and separate you from from Barry. Honestly, I didn't follow the plot too closely because I'm sure I'll play this game more than once, but one thing I have noticed was the music. Now, in my humble opinion, it's really good, and it kind of reminded me of Nier Automata soundtrack. So basically what I'm trying to say is that I cannot wait until the official OST drops on Spotify so I can listen to it when I'm working. But anyway, when it comes to side quests, it has this quirky system where you can make different dialogue choices and build up various social stats like chaos, wisdom and so on. And there's even skill checks you need to pass to open up additional dialogue options. I don't know, I kinda like it. Especially as someone who plays evil characters in RPG games, I found it pretty funny when I called someone mommy and my chaos stat leveled up. Still, the game shines best when it comes to combat. Right now, there's a stamina system where you can spend it on various stages to grind for resources so that you can level up your weapons and characters or obtain new demon wedges. And I found out to be pretty interesting because you don't just run into them and wipe the enemies out. No, no. For example, in one stage, you will need to capture an escaping enemy, while in another, you gotta keep fighting and refilling this serum to stay alive. In fact, what's cool about some stages is that you can keep fighting after you complete it to start a new wave, which will then increase the rewards and consume your stamina. However, the biggest challenge so far are the boss stages you can repeat up to 20 times per week. And in result, you can unlock unique materials, including blueprints for new weapons and those track modules I mentioned, which you can use to make demon wedges cost cheaper tolerance. Now, this challenge is called Nocturnal Echoes. And right now, I can fight up to three different bosses. All of the fights felt pretty intense. I especially liked some fights, like this big bug, where you have to destroy its parts quickly and then unleash a finishing move. Basically, this mode to me feels like the place you'll want to spend some time to test your builds and obtain some nice rewards. Oh, and the blueprints I've mentioned? Yeah, you can craft weapons and tons of other items at the blacksmith. It will require you to wait in real time for the crafting to finish, and I'm not sure how I feel about this yet, but on the flip side, the the crafting system does feel pretty in-depth. In fact, some of the stuff you craft or obtain can be used from this tactical backpack, which is usable in combat and things like HP potions can be consumed from it. And this is also where you summon your teammates, which are called combat partners. Overall, I feel like this game is going to be right up my alley. I really enjoyed the movement, combat and the systems of Duet Night Abyss. Still, because this game is in technical testing stage, it definitely has its own fair share of problems. The biggest one being was the optimization. I have encountered frame rate drops here and there, especially in the city or when facing off a lot of enemies, and I hope the developers will be able to address this soon enough. However, with Duet Night Abyss, it was really easy to approach it, and honestly, there's not a lot of overwhelming info that I need to consume in order to know how to play. Basically, just pick a character, one melee, one ranged weapon, and build two other characters for them to act as combat partners. Easy peasy, cannon obliterating squeezy. Oh, and one last thing. The game has some pretty funny emotes. You can cook some meat or you can jump into a box and hide. If that's just two emotes, I want to see the rest of them when the game launches. So yeah, my first impressions of Duet Night Abyss are quite positive. 
I really enjoyed the combat and the upgrade system. Bosses felt cool to fight against. Characters like Psyche were fun to utilize. I mean, who doesn't love a skill that allows you to fly and obliterate enemies? And I think you should pre-register for Duet Night Abyss by using my link in the description, because I am pretty hyped about it, and I will keep my eye on this game. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, and as always, I would appreciate it if you could press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, and see you next time.